So we're back. We made it for back from the Nurburgring in one piece, despite a couple of minor issues on the last day just before we left, which is why you never do one last lap, because if we had, the pedal would have gone all the way to the floor, about halfway around the track. So we're back on the drive, the GTO has made it home from the Nürburgring and we had a blast. Damn right, I did three laps on <laughs> green hell, <laughs> which it truly is. I, I only slid the car hard once. Yeah. And I didn't touch and you had anything a bit of run expensive. Out. Yeah. yeah, you had a bit of run out, there was some grass, the barriers were nowhere near, it was fine. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> the only victim was your pants. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, so now we are doing the sensible thing and we're going to go through the car and sort out all of the problems that we found at the time. Um, in the last video we pr probably mentioned that we had some brake jutter. Uh, after about four miles of hard driving, the steering wheel became aggressively angry with us uh, when we were braking. And we eventually worked out through a, proce a process of elimination reading up online and talking to somebody who had exactly the same car as we did who happened to park up next to us the saturated brake fluid have a massive problem with boiling off and it boils and it basically just pushes the pad off which is what causes the judder you can brake hard through it the guy that was there with us where when we were talking to him said he did a 930 something with this horrible brake judder which i think was pretty brave just a massaging wheel, really, which yeah. is an expensive option yes. if you're buying a new car. Pretty much, yeah. That being said, this car also does not have ABS. Yes. I... So past the, the shuttery part can also just be put the car into a slide. Yeah, which considering it rained quite a lot while we were there, meant we really lapped a lot slower than this car is capable of because the option was we could just power through and press really, really hard on the pedal but we would also then potentially lock up the wheels. And the reason this doesn't have ABS, because it did from the factory, is that quite a few years ago, the ABS module was removed because it was causing lots and lots of errors to throw up and it needs to be rebuilt and then reinstalled, which was not done. And I completely forgot that it even had the ABS removed, let alone anything else, so uh, top work by me. But we survived, we didn't really lock up the wheels particularly much we were we were fairly cautious on on our hard braking when it got nice and dry we didn't have to brake as much so we got some slightly faster times in which was really really nice but yeah we underutilized this car and we basically did that because there were far too many variables and ultimately we still had fun right like tons of fun yeah despite the fact that we weren't going especially quick we were fighting a steering wheel that wanted to shake all of our bones apart at times it was all, all okay and when we came off the track went for a cool down it all just melted away. It was perfect. There was nothing wrong whatsoever with any of it. It, it still breaks in a straight line, no judder whatsoever. So it is just whatever is in the pads. The discs haven't warped, which is what we were really, really concerned about at one point. Have we completely ruined these discs? So we're going to go and look through all of the spare parts that I got with this, because I seem to recall there is a spare pair of discs and a spare pair of pads at least that could go on this in that set when I bought this off Adrian. So we're going to go and have a look, see what we can find in the box, and then maybe try and fit them. And you might be wondering why we're sat here in the rain, and that's basically because John's only here for another, about another 36 hours, and we've got a couple of things that we want to do. Of course, typically, because it's the UK, and we've got a really nice long weekend bank holiday coming up, it's raining. So we've gone through our big box of spares, and we have found goodies. In this bag, appears to be a caliber, and it has a set of pads in, although I don't think I would fix these calipers onto the car in their current state because they are real purple. But they do have a set of what look like EBC green stuffs in, which is extremely useful. So, given we can also install these super easy by just popping these pins out and a whole assembly of blocks, we now have can't put them through that way. There we go. We now have a part one set of EBC pads, which we'll do for the time being. What's even better than that is we have a corresponding set of discs that came off the same car as these pads. And these are vented like the other ones, 
but also grooved. So if we have any problems with the pads being a bit glazed, that will just get scraped off and there'll also be a better compound. Now the, the green stuff ones are still sort of fast road pads, so they're definitely, they're probably not up to lap after lap after lap of hard track use, particularly on something like the Nürburgring. But I would wager that they would last perfectly fine for one lap, especially better than our standard ones. But one way or another, we can now put these on the car and sort, the, sort that out. We've also found three of the four wheel caps, which I didn't actually think I had any of. I had looked for them previously. I am going to have to try and find the fourth one or find the model part and order it. And we also have a lovely stainless boost hose, which if we get a chance, we might try and fit but that is probably not high on the list because really the main thing we want to sort out is the brakes. But now we've got the wheels off, we've also taken out the two bolts on the back of the caliper, they're just 17s. They come out reasonably easily, at least the top one is completely clear to the back. The bottom one, on this lower control arm at least, there was a little bump so we actually had to lift it up so that we could get the socket on and actually get it clear access to wind that bolt all the way out. But now, that is off, we can take the caliper off and I'm going to use this little zip tie up here and just zip tie it on to, okay, maybe I'm not, because I need more zip tie. Fortunately, I brought myself two. I'm just going to zip tie this onto the spring and then it's hopefully going to survive and not just dangle around on the hose. The hose itself is already a nice aftermarket unit so we don't need to do that. We did have other ones and on the one hand I don't really want to have to, well you wouldn't have to bleed the entire brake system to do this as long as your reservoir is not overflowing if you have to put the, push the pistons in but we are going to have to bleed the whole system because when we were coming back just before we were about to leave, we were debating putting another couple of laps on the card, and there's a lot of superstition around going to the ring that you never do just one more lap. So we were debating putting some more on, they've changed the system, the credits don't expire, which is a much better way. And then, about half an hour before we were due to leave, we were in it, coming up towards a car park, we were going to get some merch, and the brake paddle basically went all the way to the floor. So we do need to bleed the entire system. So that is the old disc, which looks a little bit rough. It's got some lines on it, but it's really not terrible. It doesn't have any big gouges that you can catch your nail on. So that's still pretty good. We can put the other one on, bolt this back up, and then swap the pads out. So if John can just grab me one of the other discs. Uh, now there's a bunch of questions as to which way round these slots go, whether or not you have them leading or trailing. So it's either that way or that way. Now, I'm a fan of putting the leading edge going forwards. It's only because I've done that before. I have no real preference. I have at least I have no real evidence for one way or another. I think this might be a little bit more aggressive on the pad, but I don't know. It's always worked for me, so I'm gonna stick with it. So that is the new disc on. We can align this back in place. And to get the pads out, you take off this little clip at the back, and all this is, is a little retainer. I'll pop this off without destroying it. And it has two little pins that go in down the back. All I'm doing here is putting some tension on it and just wiggling it with the screw head on the outside to try and get it to release. But, yes, that has got a big old it's got a big old bend in it. You can see that's what was pinching up. And then these pins come out. And then the entire brake assembly, the pad assembly, just kind of falls away. So that we make need to make sure that this goes back in the right way around. So the lump is at the back there. And then the pads themselves have. Oh, that's interesting. Part of the backing plate is actually completely gone on this and it's not inside. The other pads have some more bits in. In fact, I'll go and grab one of the pads and then I'll show you the difference in makeup between these two sets. 
So both of these pads are actually the same. They have this cutoff on. I'm not sure why that is. Um, when I show you in a second what the other ones are like, you'll see these have a backing plate, an additional plate, but they cover the entirety of the pistons, whereas these don't, which is a little bit interesting. I'm not entirely sure why that would be. So, put these in the same way around they came out. With all of this stacked back in. And this goes back on top. And hopefully this will all... Actually, this might be easier to do once I've bolted the uh, caliper back up. Please hold. Cool. So they're tight. So now we can work on putting the pads in. And I'm really hopeful that these are going to be of a similar level of wear to the others. But I don't think I'm that lucky. Oh, damn it. Back in a second, I need to get my pad spreader. We've used the pad spreader tool, which I bought cheap off, I think, Wish, and has served me extremely well every time I've used it. And now, we just need to slide these pads in. They're still just a tiny bit tight, but they are going in. And ultimately, I'm not taking that caliper off for a third time. Everything is a hammer. Now we can put the pins back through. And then we just put this back through, which I'm also going to straighten out. Second time to charm. That is now all reassembled nicely. That all fits in. I'm pretty sure that's it done, which is actually a lot less painful than I expected it to be. Now I've just got to do the other side and we're good. Yeah, well, we were going to bleed the brakes, but the uh, bleeder nipples are like really corroded and threatening to snap off on us or round over. Either way, worse than an air pocket. So. We're just going to throw the wheels back on and see if it's improved. And that was as far as we got. The car drove exactly the same as it did before, which wasn't much of a surprise. We weren't exactly hammering it round on the open roads. If you've enjoyed this episode, do give it a like. We'll be back on the GTO another day. Thanks again to our patrons. You can join them over at patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show. And if you'd like to support us, you can check out the merch at shop.pedalbox.show. We'll see you in the next episode.